This conference will now be recorded. You're good to go. We're recording. Okay, the meeting was called to order by Lawrence Stone at uh, 5.32 on uh, today's date, the uh, 24th of the 25th of March. Let's call the roll. Uh, Frank is, has excused Alan as absence. Ben Lightley. Here, present. David Russell. You're muted, David. David. <laughs> you I see him. Ah, there we go. There we go. Present. Lewis Pollock. Here. Stephen Day. Stephen he, Day. He's driving. He's driving. <laughs> You see him though. Cynthia, Cynthia Conroy present. Oh, I should Cynthia Conroy. Here. Thank you. And Jesus Yaro. I am here. All right. So uh, then we have the call to the public. If there's anyone from the public who is here that wants to um, uh, make a comment, this is the time for them to make a comment. Anyone from the public want to make a con uh, comment? I don't see anybody here from the public, and I didn't receive any comments to read, so. Okay, so we'll move along here. I see the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes uh, of our last meeting that was held on January 28, 2021. Uh, I have a copy of those minutes. Did everyone else get a copy of those minutes? Yes. Yep, I got one. Ben, you got them? Yep. Okay. And are they uh, 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 satisfactory to everyone here? Yes. Answer in the affirmative. Uh, a little. You should probably uh, call for a vote. There should be a motion and then a vote. Okay. Yeah, okay we're going to do that. I was going to make a motion to pass the minutes as they stand. Oh, motion needs to be seconded. Second. And that was that you, Cynthia? Yes. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of um, approving the minutes of the regular of our meeting of January 28th, 2021, uh, answer in the affirmative. Aye. 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 Lewis? I'm a non-voting member. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, David, did we hear from you? Yes, I. So it's passed unanimously. No, I'm I'm nay. Ben, you are you are voting against it. Uh, so we have um, five yeses and one uh, no. So the the minutes are approved. And moving on to the next. Um, uh, well, do you want to review the old business? Is that what goes next? Yes, sir. Okay, so discussion in regards to potential areas for expanded public parking in Old Bisbee uh, by David Russell. You want to start the topic, David? Uh, sure. This is something I know uh, we had begun discussing uh, last meeting, and I, I know it's something uh, continued, I see, on the agenda for you know new business as well. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that we are, you know, keeping up and keeping an eye on, you know, the potential of these areas and expanding and, uh, you know, really setting forth and capitalizing on some of the potential out there. Uh, because as we are coming this season, we're already seeing, you know, it being a challenge in Old Bisbee. So I have a comment. David, have you ever... Um so passionate about this as much as Cynthia and I. Have you re uh, gotten a chance to review the uh, U of A's parking study that was done? I did. I actually um, awesome. reviewed it when it was while they were, you know, doing the study, um, and some of it was quite interesting. And I did see, you know, some uh, progress from, you know, when mm -hmm. the study was completed of some areas that have been improved. Um, but I definitely think you know we can move forward, uh, adding additional areas and kind of going back to those plans and you know utilizing that as a starting point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I think it's up next in a later uh, 
agenda item is one of Cynthia's um, <laughs> suggestions for a parking spot up the gulch. Um, but uh, I think one of the easiest things in that study to do, cheapest, which we've talked about in numerous past meetings, is just putting signage yeah. uh, for people that are new to town of, hey, there's parking over there, which will help ease congestion downtown. Yeah, I, I agree that is one of the easiest um, and at most immediate fixes that we can make um, to kind of start spreading out some of the traffic in some of those areas. I think we're all aware that tourism is uh, the lifeblood of Bisbee and the more parking spaces that we have, I think the more uh, tourists we can get into the, uh, you know, uh, Bisbee, Bisbee commercial area. I don't know a business owner that's uh, opposed to that idea. Um, and generally, there would be additional parking spaces for the uh, residents when uh, the, the tourists weren't in town. And, yeah, I have a note too. Just, I just maybe Jesus can ask to answer this one. Is uh, what is it with those three parking places that still have all those barriers around them across from the TV? Sure, so yeah. like temporary. Uh, yeah, I can, I can I can answer that. So the governor uh, put in an executive order that allowed restaurants to utilize public right of way for outdoor dining. Um, Bisbee Social Club took advantage of that executive order, um, and we were um, obligated to follow that executive order as long as they met the you know our our public right of way requirements, and they did so. Um, I just spoke with the city manager today that, you know, I'm, I'm sure you don't know um, some of those executive orders that have been put, put in place due to COVID are starting to be lifted. Um, this one was not. So it's still in place. Um, so we'll just keep an eye on it. And um, once that executive order for outdoor, utilizing outdoor uh, right of way for outdoor dining, once that's lifted, then we'll uh, have them go ahead and remove that, and we can get those spaces back. That's, that's the case for that. That's that's. Yeah. Okay. I was just wondering because that just seems like counterproductive there. Yeah. No, no, there's. It had a reason, and, and hopefully that reason goes away soon. Well, I just like I'd like to comment on that with a probably minority opinion. However. <laughs> Traveled throughout the entire West, and particularly town, it's almost identical to Bisbee in terms of being a mining community. What's not identical is that it's Trinidad, Colorado, and because of the growth of Denver and Colorado Springs and the amount of money and tourists in Colorado, the town of Trinidad, with its brick old great buildings, is probably two and a half times larger than old Bisbee, the old section of Trinidad, along the river there. What they have allowed people to do, and only two of the probably 30 businesses along there opted for this, but that city allowed for exactly what this executive order has allowed, which is to take a few public spaces and have people build out, in fact, two rather than three, two public parking spaces in front of restaurants are allowed to build not plastic ugly things like is there now because it's considered temporary, but in fact have built little wooden patios, stages, and allowed for outdoor dining. And I will tell you over the four years I've driven through that town, the two places that do that, actually as a tourist in that town, you don't feel like your parking is being infringed upon because there is signage, as has been talked about, and there is things that direct people to other parking in the area. And yet you see that cute, quaint little restaurant spot you come back to that area, you may or may not eat at that restaurant, but there is no harm, in fact, a great deal of publicity in having really cute little patios that extend into parking spaces. So I would actually say, though he may or may not ask to do it, that this organization might consider that the holy grail of parking spaces is a myth. Mm -hmm. I want to say this because there is no one on this committee or in this town who has spent more 
I 30 years and probably six months out of every year and hundreds of hours looking at parking and business for my event as well as other weekend considerations. And that's why in new business, I have things that we, I think as an organization should present leadership and new concepts to our city staff that encourage people to not be afraid that if something new comes along and takes a couple of spaces, oh my God, because let's thank the mayor and I don't know who else because of the new paving, maybe Jesus can tell me, but there are roughly a good six spaces that have been created just by the way that the place has been realigned up by the courthouse and places like that. So that's, that's I just want you people and myself to open our minds to being the leaders who say, oh God, let's think about it rather than, oh God, it's so awful that somebody took a parking space or two to promote well, their let business. Let me clarify myself a little bit, Cynthia. I wasn't going, oh God, I was just asking a simple question. No, I know. No, I'm sorry, you weren't, but the public at large, oh my God, I can tell you. I've heard something like since. that already on that parking area. We do have yeah, a little bit more limited parking than Trinidad, though. you got to understand that. I, I definitely think better. Problems. You know, yeah. a friend of mine does it. The parking area is up by the... Um, we need to guide people to those parking areas that are up by the Y, up behind the Y, up by there. There's those, those places, even now, there's like downtown is all congested. And if you drive up there, there's 10, 15, 20 spots sometimes that are open. Yeah, absolutely, uh, okay. Stephen. That's, yeah, that's a big parking there. And then up above by the old county library, it's a little bit longer walk, but there's usually empty places up there too. Now, I, I will tell you that we have spoken about this, and uh, I know Ben and I have, have met a few times and we talked about that as we were speaking right now. Um, I put in a work order so that we can get those get some signs in. That's a general work order. This is get with me so that we can um, we can get place so uh i'm sitting here in front of my computer so that's the the uh advan ad advantage of being able to do meetings it's done we are we'll move forward with that there you go uh, that works wow awesome i, 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 I like it because i can cook while i'm at a meeting right? yeah, you can do that too yeah do we have to go back to in-person meetings I would. Yeah, I, I, I would. Yeah, I would. Off, yeah. off topic, but I would anticipate that's happening soon. So besides, yeah, we have a city website, and I believe it has no parking map. And like no parking map. Bogey okay. that has a great parking map, which the city could just take and use. We can charge them a dime. And so I think digitally speaking, as well as signage, we could certainly incorporate that map, which is really just a map of old Bisbee with. The, granted, it has a school home in it, but more importantly than that, it has all of the public parking areas that people don't know, and most critically will be item number six when we get to it. Okay, I made a note of that. Yeah, yeah Judy it. Perry would make a wonderful map, I bet. Yeah, I bet you would too. Steve. She's actually reached out to me to help her make a new map, so maybe we'll put our heads together and make that a thing. Yeah, do you even want to put together a, a nice, creative, or yeah, parking, yeah. We can we can probably we can add that. That shouldn't be a problem. Long. Okay. I think that'd be really important. You know. Okay. Look Did forward to seeing it. Okay. So the last bit of old business was the uh, update and discussion on street lighting around uh, the pit on Highway 80 uh, through Bisbee. We kind of okay. I think we skipped number two, uh, Larry. Number two is there's a discussion. Oh, discussion. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Discussion in regards to drainage issues along Main Street and above Brewery Gulch. Thank you. Sure. So just for review on the, um, the plans, I didn't recall seeing anything that we had. Uh, I remember talking about the drainage and with the new paving, how that you know kind of impedes that in uh, key areas, you know, along Main Street leading down and through. Um, but was what was the follow up, and you know, is there a solution to that? Um, so, you know, I was kind of left a, a little lost there. Sure. So we did finally get something back from the county. Um, what they did is they did a cross section of one area, um, and that cross section does not include any 
um, slope of the road um, longitudinally or so downstream. Uh, so it's not very clear on what kind of information that gives us. Um, I did reach out to, to uh, the county engineer and asked about how they got the pre-overlay elevations. Um, and so I'll wait to hear back on that. Um, but um, right now, what we got back from them really doesn't give us a whole lot of information because of that. Um, it does give us that, I, I don't even know that it gives us anything that, that, that I can work with. Um, I don't know how they got their elevations. I know that there were some pictures that were shared. Um, here, I, I, you know, I, I'll share this with, all, with you all. Um, let me pull this up here. Um, give me one second. Um, let me share my screen. Uh, I know that Lou will be able to see it because he's not in front of a computer. But Lou, if you'd like, you can uh, come in and I'll, I'll sh share this with you. Um, let's see here. I want to share this screen. Sure. Um, can you all see that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So what this is what they gave me, and this is a just a snapshot of a cross section. Um, and I can read you the email that was sent to me. Um, let me see here. Um, so the email says. Uh, the county did a cross section of the road pre slash post overlay to show the increasing flooding that will impact the business. This is a this is it is a one place snapshot of what we thought the highest impact would be. I don't know where that snapshot is. Um, and <laughs> again, I, it does not. If you look at it, this is a, a, a cross section. It I I don't see that it takes into consideration any slope of the road downstream this is a cross section so i don't know that this i mean it gives us some information i don't know what we can do with it um again i don't see where how i don't understand how they got the the pre the existing condition flow area i saw the bottom section there i don't know where they're getting that um top of the asphalt how they got that did they core it to find the existing asphalt and then um, then do uh, their survey from there. Um, so I, I, I get some more information on that. But this is what we got from them, and um, we'll, we'll we'll take it for what it is and utilize it in whatever manner we can. Um, again, I, I, my concern is that I don't know that it takes into consideration that slope of the road. Right. I mean, this, this doesn't seem like a, a, a solution in progress or, you know, something I mean, that we're working with. It it gives, us, it gives us some information. I don't want to say that it right. doesn't, it's it's useless. I mean, we can use it. We'll take the information it gives us and use that. Um, but again, it, when we talk about solutions, we need to define the problem first. Um, so I don't know that there's so I, I, Go ahead. I, sorry, I have I have some experience looking at these um, professional experience, and mm -hmm. I would say what this does tell us is the the cross section area. It's almost irrelevant from a legal standpoint what the what the flow rate is, because sure. it it's still we're comparing apples to apples, and so it's two point two percent worse or two two point two times worse than it was before. That's just comparing the lower one to the upper one, you know, 4.7 to to 1.98. So whatever solution we have should bring it back down so that it's the solution makes it 2.2% 2.2 times better. So one solution that Lou Paul Pollock and I discussed on site last week that could be very cheap and actually Jesus we talked about this a long time ago, like actually the day that the paving was happening, was putting in a, a speed bump up by the Royale that pushes water off Tombstone Canyon straight into the ditch. And that, that for surface area, if you're looking from the satellite down to the street, would take 
would reduce the surface area of that water catchment area uh, by a significant amount, possibly a similar amount as this cross-sectional area. So, um, you know, it's it's uh, decreasing the watershed a catchment area by half or something. I don't know. I would agree. I would agree, Ben, that 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 is a solution. But again, I don't. I think first before we start talking about solutions, is we need to find the problem. We can't start. Well, we can't solve anything unless we know what we're doing, what we're trying to solve. First off, is there a problem? I don't know that this tells us that this is a problem, because I don't know where they got the existing asphalt from. Um, I will tell you that, um, and I'll show you. I'll give you an example since we're on this subject in a second. But um, where did the existing um, is is the is does the slope of the road actually give us more flow than what this is saying? This doesn't even talk about what well, talks you about flow area. It gives you the potential flow area, but does it talk about the actual flow? It, it doesn't. It doesn't give us a cubic feet per second. It gives us a square a square foot. So we need to we need to define first. Is there a problem? And then we need to define the problem before we solve the problem. So I would agree with you, Ben, that that a, that's that is a solution to what the perceived problem is. Um, there are plenty of other ones, lots of other ones that we can talk about. Um, but first, I think we need to first we need to establish that there actually is a problem, then define the problem. And I think that's where we're coming to, and I think that actually might be in our in our, our agenda. Does it talk about, I know at one point it did, uh, about so, maybe, about I, have a, I got one question. Number 10. How much would it cost to put that water bar thing across there? Oh, I, I to put a, a speed hump? Yeah. I, yeah. Not much, right? I'm just compared to all the money it would no, cost to all this testing. It, it, it See, I just, I'm, I'm speaking from a place of knowing what's going on. I mean, it, we already know how wide it is. We can measure how deep the water is when it flows and run a bobber down the street for a 25-foot section, take three measurements, and figure the flow out. That doesn't take rocket science. I do that as a as a regular course of water measurements in Greenbush Drop or ADEQ. So actually getting that flow data wouldn't be too hard. I even volunteer myself for a rainstorm to do it. It would be accurate enough to see. but. To, J to Jason's point, the point is, is there are a couple of spots where the curb height's only about an inch, and it's on a downhill side on a curb that goes away from it. So it's basically the water coming from the uphill side is actually pointing towards that curb and then being deflected off it to go downhill. That's kind of just past the ground when you come around that corner. Um, I, I would be concerned about that spot. Um, because then, but we'd have to, like I said, and I see, I, I see Jesus is saying that maybe we ought to wait till it rains good and hard to see if actually any water is coming over the sidewalk. I, but I, I, still, I still think the speed bump's a good idea, though. That would actually alleviate the problem. Whether well, that let's put it this way: if there's not a problem, it would lessen the amount of water coming down the street in any way, and maybe make it nicer for people to cross it in a rainstorm. So, so we don't know that there's a problem first. So let, let's. I, I want to make sure that I say that. Every time somebody says there's a problem, we need to establish that there is a problem. But I will tell you that I know that this is this area here that I, this I popped up. This is on Google Earth. Um, this is one of the areas that uh, I, re I recently received some pictures on um, in this last rain. And this picture is from Google Earth. It was taken in 2016. And you can see right here that the asphalt is the same as it is now. We did. So I, I don't know that um, that anything that we have done has even created a when we say, talk about problems, we need to establish that there is a problem first. Um, so uh, I, I just wanted to share that with you. I know that this is one of the areas. Um, I, okay. I have uh, something to say. Okay. Uh, when at the beginning of the meeting, when it was stated there was no for a call to the public, there was somebody who wrote in. I was CC'd on this email. Ashley Coronado was on the email. Jesus okay. Haro, you were on this email. Uh, Louis Pollock was on this email. This email is from Sloan Bouchevet, who owns uh, who owns uh, 
the property that is most affected by this, and I will read this letter aloud right now. Dear Streets and Infrastructure Committee, attached, please find a photo showing the effect of today's very minor precipitation event. The curb at 24 Main Street was minimal before new asphalt was laid down. Now there's virtually no curb at all. I have measured this, it's a quarter of an inch. If just a minor precipitation event like today's snow flurries can breach the sidewalk and threaten the front door of 24 Main Street, imagine the damage a heavy monsoon rain would do. My entire art gallery would flood. The fact that the company that installed the roadwork actually did dig down considerably at exactly that spot, see photo attached, shows a milling machine um, with enormous routing machine before they laid down the asphalt. However, the fresh asphalt was spread out. They not only filled, it, filled up the groove that they had cut, but they leveled it out with the rest of the road. I'll, I'd estimate at that location by the front door, there's at least 10 inches of fresh asphalt. Please let us know how are you going to accomplish protecting 24 Main Street. FYI, the owners of the building, Steve and Marjorie Ralph, are copied to this email. We would really appreciate your attention to this matter. Thank you very much, Sloan. Okay. So Thank that you. was supposed to be read at call to the public. Okay. Uh, I, okay, I'm glad you read it. Um, I don't recall seeing that you asked for that. So there, there, are, there, there are two photos. I'll like to explain uh, the two photos. One is of water going right up to their doorstep with some snow in it. That was taken two days ago. The other one is the day of the milling. It shows a milling machine right in front of the business. And indeed, you can see the curb is more than four inches. I'll show you. I can, I can, I can share them. Let me know when you guys see that. You guys can see that? Mm-hmm. So there is the problem right there. So can we determine there is a flooding problem that is no, newly created? I, no, I won't. I say I see water. I don't know that that's a problem that was created by asphalt. Mr. Harrell? Yes, sir. Mr. May I make a comment? I believe, yeah, sure. You have two problems here. One is a long-range problem. We're not going to solve it tonight, but there's a an immediate problem, and that is uh, business owners in the area are concerned that when the monsoons hit again, they may not be as gentle as they were with us this year. And uh, I can understand that concern. I would suggest that the uh, Public Works Department put together an emergency, a contingency plan in case of a severe uh, episode in the coming monsoon. In other words, come up with a plan that will protect the doors of those two or three businesses so that you can divert enough water where they're not going to uh, not going to be flooded. I saw that as a possibility when I looked at it with Mr. Lepley. Uh, and I agree with him that the contingency plan would be a good thing to have in place. Uh, we can all read a weather report and prepare two or three days ahead of time. So you might want to consider that as an option for addressing the concerns of the business people in that area. Yes, sir. I, I would agree with that. Um, I, I would tell you that um, we definitely, we, we have a report, um in the forecast, uh, we definitely should uh, prepare for that in, in any manner, whether it's mem members of the community here or talking about or any other community, um, we definitely will, will, will do that. We always want to make sure that this isn't, this isn't just this issue, this is with everything. So I will make sure that I make a note of that and, uh, and rest assured that I promise you we will have something in place uh, of an emergency. One of the things that you can't really see in that picture is that there is a manhole cover directly in front of that address that's been welded shut. Is it possible that that could be part of a storm drain system? No, absolutely not. No, ADEQ will not allow that. Uh, what, what, what's under the manhole cover that's been welded shut? I'm not sure where you're talking about. In this picture that we're showing right now? Uh-huh. If okay. you look, if Let's you, go back to this. Yeah. So we're talking about, there's a man, went back to the Google Earth right. image. Right. 
Right, you've got it right there. I believe you're pointing at it right there, isn't that? Right there, the yeah. sewer manhole. Right. I, no, I, it's not, I do not believe that it is a septic sewer manhole. It's not? I, I don't you know. know what, you're right. You're, you're right. You're right. You're right. Because the sewer is right here. If it's in the middle of the road. Right. I don't know what that is. I have to look at that. I believe that that may well be a drain, a storm drain. Because the drain is right on the back side. Who is it? I beg your pardon? If that is a storm drain, so that goes into it's a, a maybe a clean out for a, a storm drain that goes into the gulch, it is possible that we could use that. Yeah. Another thing that we might want to do uh, at that address, when you walk downhill and you look up that sidewalk, that sidewalk dips right there. Yes, sir, it does. Uh, I would guess by, you know, uh, four or five inches. Mm -hmm. And the sidewalk is broken. And the sidewalk, you know, might be due for a repair. You could just put four inches of concrete on top of what's there, raise that manhole cover or open it up better yet so that it would drain into the storm drain that runs behind these or maybe even under these properties. I don't know. You silly cat. Sorry. <clears throat> That's a very tricky thing to do, Larry, because of the ADA uh, concerns that you would have having a lip there that create a tripping hazard in front of that gallery and um, the, also the uh, the gallery has historic uh, white tile which you can see in that photo which is already flush with the sidewalk so putting a side uh, a raised sidewalk there would cause more problems on that area um, well, there's and no possibly be more expensive than milling you down the asphalt. Side, you're going to need a ramp on the back side of that in order to bring it into. You know, I was down there. They have a lot of really nice laminated flooring there in that gallery, that Artisma gallery. Beautiful new laminated flooring. And I don't think we really need to let that flood to determine <laughs> that there may be a problem or it is in fact a problem when we could mitigate this. And so, you know, I understand that beautiful white tile there might be um, obscured by a little wooden deck or something that, you know, was the owner of the property would, or the tenant could put in. Uh, the ramp could go in the front door down from the four-inch lift on the uh, sidewalk. And um, that would uh, probably be a solution that we could discuss later on under new business. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. Cynthia? Hello? Yes. yes hey, sir. Sus, is it yes, true sir. that within a month of this, uh, so Mr. Stone, Chairman Stone, can I go ahead? Yes. My question. Uh, hey, Sus, was it not true that within a month of uh, the laying down of this new pavement that you, or somewhere in that time range, you and the mayor, I don't know if it was mayor at the time, anyway, that you and Ken Budge sometime within three months after the pavement walked and one of the things talked about was you know how there's right where those vehicles are and we all know about the big drainage thing that's right down there that keeps the water from flooding into Bisbee Coffee. Yes. If you back up, because we all know that the water starts high at the top, like way up there on, you know, off the mountains and it comes rushing by where I am at 201 Tombstone Canyon. I've seen it flooding down there at, you know, 40, 50, 100 miles an hour, a foot and a half or two at a monsoon. And then, and then, so right where there's the crosswalk, which would be one spot, even further back up, right in front of Bisbee Royale, was there not discussion to build a big metal, I mean, how expensive is it? Tear up the pavement, put in a metal drain like a cattle guard, bam, the water just drops into that gulch that's right to the side. How expensive would that be? I mean, he mentioned yeah. that he'd been talking to you about that. That, to me, seems like the perfect solution and much better than, quote, a speed bump. Even yeah, though I love that is something that that was discussed as a possibility, but again, uh, I'm going to go back to saying that first we need to, we need to uh, establish that there actually is a problem with reading. You know, showing this is Haro. I I emailed you. I emailed you the Arizona state law, hydro hydrologic law, which spells out very clearly when a and I'm going to summarize it. When any property owner, including a government entity, 
changes hydrology uphill from another property owner, and government is not exempt from this, they are liable, legally liable for damages caused. That's all there is to, to it. Okay, and because, me, right, and sorry, because I'm not done. I am not. No, let me, let me, let me cut me off. I'm going to cut you off. I am not, not finished. finished. We need to establish the finished. finished. Okay, let's let the finish. I am not finished. Okay, let's finish. I am not finished. 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 Can I finish? I am not finished. I haven't finished your point yet. Go ahead, Cynthia. No, actually, I'm finished. Ben's on. Okay, Ben. <laughs> that is the state law. And to support that fact, the hydrologic study shows the prism change. The area of water has indeed changed by a factor of two. So not only do you have the state law that disagrees with you, you also have proof done by an outside entity, in this case Cochise County, that shows the area prism, the prism area of water has indeed changed. Therefore, you have caused a change to a neighboring property. If you want to debate that with a lawyer in a lawsuit, that is a huge waste of taxpayer money. And previous cases have already been lost by the city and we see them at every single council meeting. I'm sick and tired of that waste. It is so much cheaper to put a curb or a drain or something like that before you get your ass sued. I'm done. Mr. Stone, can I ask for a favor, please? Sure, yes, sir. I would prefer that this uh, meeting uh, be conducted in a manner that is professional without curse words. Um, <laughs> So if we, if we could do that, please. Sure. Um, so I will admit, I will go back to exactly what I was thinking. Um, the, the document that was provided to us by Cochise County gives us a, some information that can be useful. Um, it does not give us what a flow rate is before or after. That is my point. We need to establish that the flow rate has changed. All right. I think that concludes the old business discussion of the uh, drainage there on Main Street. Uh, and we uh, can we move along now to the um, update and discussion on street lighting around the pit. To include our discussion of the old business. Um, I am ready to ask for some help from the city council and the mayor to move uh, Mr. Robert uh, Clintonar, who is the manager of the Freeport Mac Moran um, uh, operation here in Bisbee, uh, into some action. Um, I first contacted him on the 15th of December 2020 to uh, let him know that I had heard from the Department of Transportation that the lights around the pit were actually Freeport McMoran property. And I asked him if he could check into that to confirm that that was uh, so or not so. And at that time, he told me they were of uh, limited manpower and uh, he would get to it as quick as he could. I contacted him a second time on the 30th of December to wish him a bright and happy new year. I contacted him a third time after Antonia Morales contacted me from Arizona Department uh, Air, uh, APS to say that she was ready to move ahead with the lighting of uh, 80. And I told him that we would, uh, it was just before Valentine's Day, we would love to know who owned the lights and we would love to get the lights back on and I wished him a happy Valentine's Day. Uh, then I contacted him a fourth time uh, after there was some uh, the article in the Bisbee Observer that said that uh, they didn't know whether the steps belonged to Freeport Mac Moran, and uh, this might be a chance to uh, find out if, in fact, the light poles still, uh, you know, uh, it, you could maybe find out about both the light poles and uh, the steps. He came back with information. I don't know about the steps. I don't know where that information came from, but he didn't do anything. He hadn't forgotten about me, and he was still shorthanded. But uh, it's been 100 days since I first contacted him to ask him if their Freeport Mac Moran, in fact, owned the light poles around the pit. I think that's a, 
uh, a reasonable amount of time for him to determine whether he owns uh, Freeport Mac Moran owns the lights or not. And I get the feeling that he's waiting perhaps uh, for some contact from either the mayor or the city council to say that we would like to move forward uh, one way or another uh, with the lighting around the pit and uh, perhaps there's some other place that we could get information. I didn't want to necessarily push him any further myself. I didn't want to alienate him. I think I have a good relationship with him. But uh, maybe a letter from the mayor or the city council uh, requesting the information that I asked for 100 days ago mm, might show that it wasn't just me alone asking for the information, but the city leaders uh, we're interested in obtaining that information. It seems like a low cost uh, uh, action to take to uh, just kind of get this thing going. Uh, when I originally uh, got his name, I ran into his um, uh, safety engineer at the front gate. The gate's all locked up. You can't go in there. And that's how I got his email address. And the safety engineer for Freeport, Matt Moran, said, you know, he thought that uh, for safety's sake, those lights should be lit. And so if they find out, in fact, that those lights belong to Freeport, Matt Moran, their safety engineer is already on record as saying that he believes those lights should be lit. So I think, from, I, I think he's just stalling at this point for whatever reason, I don't know. Um, but perhaps a letter or call or email from our mayor or some of the city council uh, would um, get some uh, uh, action that I haven't been able to get by myself. Do you think we could help with that, Lewis? I can try. Okay. I'm willing to try. I think that would be great. I think it just is, you know, uh, as uh, important as I, uh, the uh, chairman of the uh, Streets and Infrastructure Committee might sound, it, that, that whole mayor thing sounds a lot more uh, significant to many, many people. I'll do what I can, Larry. Okay, well, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I don't see what the downside could possibly be. Uh, the downside to what? Trying to get an answer? Yes, contacting him at a higher level from the city than uh, the chairman of the, of the Streets and Infrastructure Committee. Sure, I agree with you. Yeah, we're being powerless. I'll tell you what, put it on the agenda and I'll give you a report the next time we meet. Okay. I'll make a note of that. I want to talk to you about it too, Jesus. Absolutely. So that brings us to the new business. And I guess there was a request for an update. Uh, now, I don't know, in discussion of the play, paving plan for the city, printout cost schedules from uh, uh, the tracking software. Uh, ben, I sent you a copy of that public uh, news release that was in the, um, Sierra, the Sierra Vista Herald Tribune that mentioned all of the streets that were going to be paved next. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can bring that up for you right now, Larry. Okay, here it is right now. The one newspaper that almost nobody in Bisbee reads, I gotta love that. <laughs> well, so, yeah, it's not the paper of record, but... Um, uh, oh, I don't think they printed it. You know. Or was there some other information that you were interested in besides uh, what we see here, Ben? Well, uh, the, the reason I, I requested that is... Uh, that was kind of the default. That was always on the agenda every streets and infrastructure meeting, historically speaking, uh, uh -huh. with Andy Haradic and mm -hmm. and uh, previous. So it's it's just for me, it's just a matter of form, uh, making sure that one percent is uh, spent in the most uh, politically supportive yeah. way possible. So let me let me just speak on on this. That better, Jason. Thank you. This is this is basically our first phase of our spring uh, paving. Is uh, we we this came up in our city council meeting, and I did request that the purchase asphalt for this. Um, I did request two hundred and fifteen thousand, not the one hundred and seventy-eight, only because 
the widths of these roads, um, uh, they, they aren't consistent. So lots of times they're wider in some areas, narrower in some of them. So basically gave us a 20% consistency. Um, so this is our first phase of our, our spring uh, paving. One thing I did want to bring up to you, because this was on subject and we've been talking about that, is let me find, um, oh, this is so this is kind of look a look forward uh, beyond that. Um, so this these are the roads that iWork is telling us needs an overlay. And so, and, and this is all, you know, based upon input from us. So, so we'll go back and we'll, 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 when we look at the verify that in fact, yes, the, the road condition index that is input is correct. And McNeish, but, we already did McNeish. And the very good the case. Uh, but the, these are what it's telling us what, what needs to come next. And these are sections, um, but uh, we'll, we can uh, look at those. But this is what, this is what we'll utilize for uh, taking a look and, and getting with our, our next phase. You have Ben's it's, mail address, don't you, Jesus? I'm sorry, what's that? You have Ben's uh, email address? Oh, yes. Mark, please. Email address? Yes, I do. Do you think you could email that to him? Yes, I can. All right, excellent. Oh, yeah, there are some ports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, again, this is just kind of a snapshot of what it's, what it's showing us that would be next. So the RSL, the higher the number is the worst quality or? Lower. That, that oh, so the zeros are like super rough. Yes. And again, when we did, when we did the, the, the pavement assessment, um, we had to utilize our, uh, our interns. Um, they did a, a, a decent job, but we do know there's some areas that probably should be adjusted. You know, there were some that um, showed that they were in good condition and, and really they weren't. They, they could have used some, some attention. So we'll definitely go back and look at that. And actually, you know, that's something that we probably want to do on a yearly basis is go back and, and, and reassess those roads and put input, input a, a condition index. And the, these yeah. are also grouped uh, by uh, the closeness to each other, so. No, they're not. You know, this, this is just uh, what it, it got out. We can, we can organize them in such a way. See, I have this pet peeve against about the Bermuda grass roads. Yeah. I've gone up to look at them. You feel that Bermuda grass array away? It's like it's like gator back. I mean, those roads, if you were to go in there and scrape that grass that's on there off now, you'd have to almost classify those up there in the 9 or 10 range as far as pretty much, you know, you have 150, 200 foot sections, four feet wide that are just completely destroyed. I just, I, I, I just I hated that because I gave a discussion, I gave a meeting on that, and everybody hates Roundup. So, but uh, the fact of the matter is, if you're going to pave over Bermuda grass, those are the results. A 20-year road lasts about five years before it's completely failed, and that those roads cost around $110,000. I know Campbell was about a $110,000 road. Hey, Campbell hey, Steve, Stephen, I'm so, Stephen. I have a question for you. Um, uh, I, I, actually, I wish the old guys were here because they were experts at actually paving, but I'm doing a canal now, and underneath the canal, we're actually putting in a 30 mil vinyl liner as for an infrastructure project, and that, that just makes it su super waterproof. And I'm wondering if you can do that underneath asphalt to keep Bermuda grass from going through. No, we discussed that. The thing is, we did that. It gets water, it'll get under it, it costs the asphalt to float. You have to actually have to have something permeable that drains okay. underneath the asphalt. Not a, yeah. And the stabilization cloth they put under roads, that's super porous, but then Bermuda grass, if you've got any little tiny hole in it, it'll grow through it. It's Or it'll grow to the edges and then grow up around the edges. But the okay. stuff on the edges is easier to deal with. You can keep digging that up and make it go away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Steven, I have a question it's since you're not pre a lot about It's pre-treating, pre somehow pre-treating prior to putting the asphalt down is where I'm at. So that yeah. we don't expose people to those chemicals because it is a carcinogen. It's like gasoline. You gotta be really careful with it. Use it with great minimal things, but you know, that's for a different discussion. 
Oh, I have a question. Hello? Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, don't Germans. Uh, yeah, question. You were talking about the streets over here in Warren where the Bermuda grass and lots of other bushes have come through. Like I have, uh, you know, all these streets, Navajo Trail, you name it. But the funny thing, here's my question. It appears to me that Bermuda grass is actually stimulated in its growth. Because when the old roads were there, the Bermuda grass wasn't popping through in three foot by two foot sections. The road was paved and within, and then right after the monsoons, within two months, three months, up popped literally grass growing where it didn't grow in the old roads. But it seemed to grow Absolutely. faster and stronger because of the pavement. You're right. <laughs> like the heat. Nutrition. It doesn't even need water. All it needs is heat. As soon as it warms up, it starts growing. And guess what asphalt is? Nice and warm. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. You're, yeah, I mean, you're, it's you're, you're exactly right. And that's the reason it was so bad. If you treat before you put it down, even get rid of 99% of it, chances are you're not going to have that problem. Yeah, well, I know be, that was we put down beforehand. We know when we're going to pave. You could go there a month ahead of time, kill the grass, then pave it. Well, I think somehow someone should know that if we pave anything out here in suburbia, i.e., Warren and San Jose, somebody needs to make some sort of an exception that we're not going to allow our pavement to be destroyed, as you say, within a, a one or two years. Out here, it took one year to two years by the plants that we did not kill or did not. Chop up. Yeah. I mean, whichever. That's it is. an interesting I mean, thing because a lot of people who can understand the point of being not an herbicide person. I understand. I'm an organic gardener. Trust me. I, if I right. could have suggested at that work session any other solution that would have worked, I would have. But to this date, there's still. And I keep trying to find one. Still isn't anything you can well, spray I, on. Go through asphalt. That'll kill the root. A e and G so. treats a landscape before they pay, whether they say so or not, and that's why we don't have things growing. Uh, on Tombstone Canyon, for example. You know that. If a contractor does it, that's different. If the city said that they wouldn't apply it themselves, that's kind of the edict. There's really no regulation against it. That's just an agreement they made with people a long time ago, and we've been sticking to it. I yeah, tried no. to dissuade them from it a few years back. It was like six years ago, but they weren't going for it. And I, you know, I, no. I totally understand, but we have to come to grips with if we know this is a bad area to pave, just don't pave it. Just live with the terrible street. Right. You know, waste the money putting asphalt on it. Well, that's exactly right. It's, you know, sort of. I mean, at least we can drive down the middle over here in roads that used to be potholes. You can drive in the five-foot middle. It's just the two foots on the other side are all trees and grass now, literally within three years. You know? Hey, Sus, do you have uh, an opinion about using herbicide in places where the grass is um, growing very thickly at, at the S what will soon be under the new pavement? My opinion is that the uh, grass, weeds, those types of things need to be eliminated before we pave. Um, I'll uh, second that. This is the, this, it, is the only place that, um, in my experience, that has had issues with an herbicide. Um, well, but the, the the right thing to do is to eliminate those before you pay because Stephen is ex absolutely right. The the heat of that uh, new asphalt is only going to uh, allow it to grow. So are we all in agreement that a good Bubba policy to follow? Stephen? Maybe we could. Make an well, I think if public opinion were to have changed since the last time, like six years ago, I gave the talk at a work session. Uh, there were a lot of people there, and of course, I was labeled as a Monsanto representative and all sorts of things. But you know, besides the fact, <clears throat> we actually did give the chance for the alternative people to come up with a solution or maybe try other things to see if they'd work, and they couldn't either. But at that point, the city was supposed to then go, okay. Since we couldn't find an alternative, we can go ahead and do this, but they never came to the they just they, they they just decided to continue with not using it. And it's laid that way, but it's been about six years or five years and it's been that way since. So I, I don't know. I mean, you know, we can we can try again. Well I can suggest you can try again. I feel pretty strongly that in places where the grass has ingrown into the roadway and is uh, you know out of control. That it, it, I think the consensus on the committee here 
is that we ought to uh, eliminate the grass before we put the asphalt down. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, yeah. Because, because of the nature of the substance, you actually kind of probably have to hire a private contractor to do it. Otherwise, you've got to train everybody in the city staff with hazmat. That was another issue that we were going with, and the cost of having to train everybody to be able to handle the, that. So the best suggestion would be to put out for bids to do that. Um, for a company that already has the handlers permits, otherwise, like I said, you have to train all the city staff with you know handling and dilution. I guess I guess the only other sure shot is mechanical uh, removal, but you would have to remove all the old asphalt to get the roots that go in between, right? Yeah, but then you would be building a brand new road, and then you got to go through a whole bunch of then there's a whole bunch of different rules that apply. We can overlay any road we want. But if we start digging up stuff like that, and it, like there's state regulations on what is required for a brand new road, and actually removing all of the debris first, and that includes roots or anything organic matter, it would almost be required by those by those map by what is it mag regulations, mag standards to remove the roots if you're actually building brand new roads. They wouldn't allow you to by mag standard to pave over roots. But if they're existing roads, you can pave over them. And uh, there's no way to get rid of this Bermuda grass so with salt water or solarization. You couldn't just overlay it with the black plastic on a hot day and let the sun do the work. Or yeah, they try that. No work. Doesn't all it does is kill the tops and makes the root stronger. Uh -huh. And salt it's water. One, it's one of those. Literally, it was one of three plants that Roundup was initially created to destroy: Adzu, Bermuda grass, and blackberries. The three noxious weeds, you can't really get rid of any other way. And if they just stuck with it like that for those purposes, I think it would probably be okay. But they chose to, like, fly airplanes and spray it over hundreds of millions of acres and on all our grain products and shit. So I can understand people's fears. It's in all our food. It's ridiculous. But for spot applications with a binder in it that makes it stick, it's rainproof, then you put a dye in it so everybody knows it's there. So if everybody wants to avoid it, you can avoid it. It's actually pretty safe. But um, it's just pub it's public opinion. We have a the city has a, a basically a gentleman's agreement with the public that if the public says that they do not want herbicides sprayed, they're not going to spray them. And I agree with that. I try. You know, I agree with it. But I also agree. With, I also agree with trying to change that because, like I said, that at, at a certain point, at a certain point, the use of the herbicide to 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 destroy to stop hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of destruction. Um, that that's where you have to start to kind of drawing those lines where you're willing how much destruction are you willing to allow before you go okay I give up we have to I think the city staff should revisit this somehow yep. mm -hmm. I, do, I believe I believe Cynthia's right I believe so Put that on your list hey. we'll do we'll do our best <laughs> we'll do that, we'll give them uh, Come on. we can only advise the city <laughs> Oh shit! I put a hundred hours of research into that work session. That was a that was a bomb. Actually, I had fun doing it. Okay. Okay. Well, we've gotten a little bit uh, off track there. So, yeah. we're gonna, yeah. All right. So now, what about the um, public works uh, update and discussion of the one percent her funding changes to date? Uh, to my, I have, was unaware that there were any changes in the HERP funding. I did. I, I, I had a meeting with our uh, finance department. Um, we are on track with both our HERP and our 1% sales tax. Um, we, we aren't far off, if, if, you know, so we're doing well. Um, we just got a report from the state. We are expected to get um, the same funding. So we're, we're, doing, we're doing okay. We're, we're hanging in there, and as long as we utilize those funds appropriately, we should be good. Okay. Moving on to item number three, the uh, 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 update and discussion on the Ironman parking area and crosswalk. I'd like to say that I remember discussing this at the November 2020 meeting. Uh, Jesus uh, declared that the striping had been completed as part of the um, – uh, of Tombstone Canyon Road, okay. and there was not going to be a, an additional crosswalk put in there, and the Ironman parking uh, area was going to stay free form until a later date. 
and nobody seemed to object to that in uh, the November 2020 meeting. Am I incorrect about that? You aren't, uh, but there, there is a little bit of an update. Um, oh, good. There, there's some discussion about um, input to putting in some a uh, the electric car uh, charging stations there um, at that location in front of uh, BVI, um, and so they they BVI is uh, um, put in the application with APS, and so we're working with APS, um, and and that is actually. Um, good timing for us. So we've got that paved, and so now we can work on. In order for that, those electric car stations, uh, charging stations, to be there, they require four spaces. So it's going to require us to rework that intersection of Clawson and Tombstone Canyon, and then that moves smoothly on into being able to rework the parking at uh, across over the, on, at the county. So I'm I'm in the process of drawing some a concept. Up for the mayor, um, the mayor will then uh, start putting out feelers and in, in seeing how well that goes. Um, once I draw that concept up, um, I probably will. Uh, you guys are all the streets and infrastructure committee, so I will have that uh, uh, distributed to you all too, so you have that. But the mayor is is going to put those feelers out and see see what, what how how well that's um, accepted. Because it's going to be a change, and um, from my short time here, um, I know that change is usually um, <laughs> so, Yeah, so we'll roll the dice and how it goes. I will tell you that, again, from my experience here, is, is we definitely need to get um, input from the um, community. I feel that if, if we can get a little bit of acceptance, and, and get the ball rolling and maybe get some ideas let the community be feel like it's their their um idea if it's the community's idea i think it'll it'll definitely be something that that moves forward so um that that's what that's my update i think cynthia has something to say yeah you're kind of right. like to say to ben and, uh, and everyone that but based on that the citizens are not happy, and that leads from not only what Ben brought up, which is number three, but number four. Uh, so the Iron Man statue, Screaming Banshee, BVI area, up uptown, I call it. The crosswalk that's no longer there from Screaming Banshee across um, is the area to be rebuilt in some fashion, which would include electric, electric car charging, and crosswalks and an extension of sidewalks. So once it comes out, uh, Jesus, I assume you'll bring it back to this committee so they can, as a group, give it to their blessing and go out there. I mean, if they would, if you all would give it your blessing, because it is an important change that uh, not only brings us four electric car parking spots, which is the future, um, but it lets us take this problem area where people speed 45 miles an hour, where one of my dear friends was paralyzed, and I'm sure many of you know James, that area by the Iron Man statue is a death trap. It is it is a pedestrian and car death trap. Right. Yeah. That project, if Jesus and the mayor get it together, would be wonderful. So I hope you all would support it, and that leading to the next one, Screaming Banshee, where there used to be a crosswalk, why isn't there a crosswalk there? I don't. I, I, I don't understand what. They it, forgot to paint it or something. If I if I may, Cynthia, real quick, I think there's in total six crosswalks that are no longer existent, from um, Naco Road up through Main Street into Tombstone Canyon. I, I I'll talk about that as soon as we we're done with three. If we want to say we're done with three, you do have to understand the state definition of a crosswalk, and that's at the end. Whether it's marked or unmarked, the intersection of any two streets is a crosswalk. Period. Unless it says "Do not cross," you don't have to paint lines. It's a it's assumed a crosswalk. So painting the lines is an additional safety that we should do in town. Of course, we don't want tourists or even our local people to get run over, and safe places to cross with good views of and that the one by 
the one that was by the Banshee, that allowed for long views in both directions. I don't see there was an ADA compliance issue there. I, I to this day, I still don't agree. I don't know why they didn't repaint that one. A couple of the other ones I can understand, but that one I just don't understand why. Well, I don't understand the one at the Royale because. So it's can, we, can we? Can we? Uh, Mr. Stone, can we? Are we? Are we done with item three? Are we moving on? Yes, I think we can move on to item four now. Uh, I think we may have already transitioned into that. Okay, good enough. All right, so let, let me just uh, kind of explain why some of those crosswalks were not restriped. Um, they weren't restriped because there were no ADA handicap ramps at those locations. Um, we cannot invite people into the road without a way for them to get out of the road. That's not to say that those can't go back in a future time. That means that we would have to to construct an ADA handicap ramp. Oh, I get you. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so we can do that. It's absolutely we can do that. Um, I will tell you that mid-block ramps, and I and I can show you. I wish I had it, had it pulled up in the MUTCD, but um, mid-block. In fact, I, if I if I can do it quickly, I will. Um, the MUTCD it stands for the uh, Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Um, that's published by the Federal Highway Administration. Um, they are they very specifically say that mid-block crosswalks um, are something that needs to be taken very um, I don't want to say serious, but that you you have to be there's a delicate situation. You make sure that you have to sign those um, appropriately. A lot of times, and if I can pull this up. Um, Let's see here, uh, but mid-block ramps, they mid-block crosswalks, they're acceptable. You just have to be careful with them, and I don't think that any of the ones that we had were um, like inappropriate or anything. It's just that they did not have ADA uh, handicap ramps. Is we, that... can, we, can look, we can look at putting those in, and we've done them, and so it's something we can do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I. You don't necessarily need an engineer to do ADA. I, I'm a no, licensed right. architect, and I no, can do I, it. So if if you if you need help with that, like figuring that out, I I know those like the back of my hand. So just let absolutely. Me know. Hey, okay. so we, 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 we build them. when we build them, we build them to max standards. So it's not something that needs to be engineered. We have the we have the details. We have the drawings. We build them to that, and so it's just a matter of us having to install them. You know, I, I will tell you that if we had technically, technically you can get a wheelchair, but process without one, but you actually need the ramp there. But the don't the load up. A wheelchair can get navigated without a ramp, but I can understand the point. So you have to actually have a compliant, a legally compliant ramp. That's just so something. we need to have them there, even if there wasn't a sidewalk there. And I will give you an example. I don't think it. Well, I'm going to take that back. If there was no sidewalk there. It's appropriate to have a handicap ramp so that we can get somebody. If we invite somebody into the road, at least they can get off the road. If they get yeah. off the road, what they do after that, I, I can't, I can't, I can't do help them too much with that. But I, if I can get them off the road, we're good. So if we had the resources, they would be back. All of them would be back. I know that. But uh, as of right now, it's just going to take us some time. Well, the one who went across right in front of the, the Iron Man, that was a ridiculous one. I mean, that one's going to be, hopefully we can get that taken care of with our um, reconfiguration. Yeah. David, Russell, David Russell's been waiting very patiently to add his opinion here. David, go ahead. So I now realize and understand, you know, with the um, – you know, ADA compliance of how you have to have, you know, have actual ramps and all of that. But is that the same truth for uh, both of the uh, main parking lot areas along right on Naco Highway and Main Street right there? Because essentially we're saying, hey, park here, and then you're stuck in that parking lot. There's no sidewalk or crosswalk into neighboring businesses or, you know, any other access for people to safely, um, you know, access the city from where they're parked. You're talking in front of your business here? Let me see if I can pull it up on a map. So uh, yeah, that'd be, I mean, both in front of um, the little city lot in front of the BTC as well as the main parking lot, uh, which I know is. 
So the main parking lot, at least from the 2000, well, this is a 2019 aerial. The main one there, it looks like it does have a handicap ramp in there. I might be wrong, but I'm looking. Um, the one in front of uh, BTC, it, the, from 2019, it looks like um, there's a crosswalk that goes straight into the parking lot. Is yeah, there was yeah. a ramp. On, there was a ramp on the sidewalk side, but no ramp on the parking lot side. Just the apron to the parking lot. Right. Correct. I there's that little like bush area. Okay. I mean, one could be constructed, but there's not. Yeah, yeah, that'd be easy. There's room for it there. Oh, super easy. Um, it's just that area in particular, because there's no adjacent sidewalks or buildings or you know um, hmm. anywhere for people to go. They're stuck dodging traffic. You know, we, we would sit there and watch them all day long. Actually, um, you're right. There's no way out of that parking lot. There's you know, there. so people either run across the, the double street into the larger parking lot or run across the street towards my building or the um, fire station. As an aside, I noticed that they recently increased the speed limit there on Naco Road from 15 miles an hour to 25 miles an hour. Yeah, and they made it blinking and obvious. And I just thank you for bringing that up, Chairman Stone. Why? Why are when you letting When you're speeding, it it's it's when you're speeding. But if you go there at 25, it doesn't uh, blink, Cynthia. But I still think 25 <laughs> is too fast. When you come into town, when you come into oh, yeah. town. It, so I, I'd be happy. I, I'll be happy to discuss that with you all um, individually. Um, but because it's not on the on there, uh, I, can, I can definitely I can definitely uh, talk about that. And uh, could we vote to install the ramp into that parking lot since we have room for it and it's easy peasy? And there's really, I mean, there is no marked way out of that parking lot. Uh, you you're right. Absolutely not parking in that lot. Is that what we're talking about across from BTC? Yeah, that one lot, there's no marked, no crosswalk, nothing from that lot anywhere. And that's a city you don't lot. Need to, you don't need to vote to install something like that. Let me take a look at that. Um, and if that's something that we can do, we'll do it. There, there's no, I don't, I don't, and this, first off, you can't vote for it because it's not on the agenda, but I will tell you, it's not, it's, I don't think it's necessary. You, your, your discussion is, is, is enough, I believe. You feel like you need to, we can put it on the next agenda. Well, well so see. maybe we should put the power sure, hour back on. What's that, Cynthia? <laughs> maybe, I'd like to know why we're not asking people to enter right there at 15 miles per hour. I've been testing okay. it. 25. Let Way me, too fast right there. Let me... <laughs> let, let, <laughs> 40. If you, you want to discuss that, <laughs> If you want to discuss it in our public that's meeting, we can add that yeah. to our next agenda. I'd be happy to discuss that with you. Um, okay. If you want to discuss it individually, um, feel free to come in or give me a call, and I can I can talk to you about that. Okay. Isn't Larry yeah, Stone the chair? Yes. Uh, moving right along, uh, we have a uh, let's see. Cynthia, I couldn't tell what you were trying to discuss. Oh, the 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 discussion on compliance versus safety, and reestablishing usefulness and safety. I didn't know what that referred to exactly. No, uh, good question. <laughs> let me let me read that and see. Discussion on compliance versus safety, reestablishing usefulness. And safety. I think it's, it's a great the example of what. I is this speed limit, for example, where it used to be 15, and I'm sure Jesus would say now it's supposed to be 25. Uh, eight, that's the qualification. I'm just wondering how we, the city, changes codes where we where we can make things safe as versus complying with some either state law or federal law or whoever, or, her okay. or highway law or whatever it is that controls things like speed limits. So we actually could discuss this based on my very broad concern about safety. We can. Sign let, let, me, let, me, let me explain with, with that. So the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices, um, the MUTTD, is something that has to be adopted by every state. 
you either have to adopt it or you have to adopt it with your um, supplements or you have to create your own. If you don't adopt it, the federal the federal government will not give you grants. Period. Yeah. Like just like just like the um, alcohol consumption consumption age, all those good things. If you don't adopt this, you don't get grants. You don't get grants. So the state, bye, of, bye, Arizona, bye. Yeah. The state of Arizona adopts the MUTCD with the sub Arizona supplement to it, and so we follow that. The MUTCD gives us guidelines on how to establish speed limits. Um, there is no speed limit lower than 25. Um, it's residential speed limit. And so it gives you, in, in, in short, the way speed limits are established is you should, you should, and it doesn't say shall, because there's, there's, there's shall, should, and may. May. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, and will. <laughs> so there is no doubt. So you could establish your speed establish your speed limits at the eighty the eightieth percentile speed. What that means is eighty percent of the vehicles travel at a certain speed or lower. So it doesn't say eighty percent of the vehicles travel at that speed is that speed or lower. Um, that's how speed limits are established. If you establish a speed limit based on I think it's not safe, you won't. That won't fly. Won't fly at all. It's not what's 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 adopted by the state. It's not what's been there. So okay. that's the way you should do it. Um, there are other things that are that are involved you, with with maybe blind spots, vertical, horizontal changes, those types of things. Um, so there are other things, but. In short, that's the way speed limits are established. Speed bumps. You're allowed to put 15 mile an hour speed bumps in. You just in a 25 mile an hour speed limit area. I think that's how they get around that. 25. You, you shouldn't. Be, you should not post. You should not install it. In anything that's on 25. They have. They don't have any posted speed limit less than 25 anywhere. But in residential areas, they will have speed bumps that reduce you to 15. And believe me, if you're going 25 over one, you'll, you'll go 15 over the next one. So they sure. do their job. But uh, yeah, as to, that is how the city of Tucson gets around that 15-mile-an-hour speed limit. You can put in a speed table that lowers the speed limit. So it doesn't lower the speed limit. What they do is they put in advisory speed. So they're going to tell you speed humps, and they put the little – 15 yeah, there. That's no, no, no. advisory. It's telling you, you should go this speed. Otherwise, if you go faster, something else could happen. Um, but anyway, that's to, to continue the answer, Cynthia. The way to change things is the city council can actually pass ordinances um, that say one way or the other. If they want some other traffic control device or however it may be, the city council can actually pass something. Um, but again, I would advise the city council um, to to follow those guidelines set forth within the MUPD unless you have a super good reason because if you don't have a reason you just said I think uh, that's okay. not good. Well I guess we just keep waiting till someone gets run over and then we'll have a perfectly good reason. People unfortunately deaths um, that could be Quick can be prevented are uh, actually within the MUTCD. They are there for different types of control devices. Yeah, well, that's not what we want, obviously. But nice new sign, so I congratulate you on the solar sign that blinks because 25 is better than the 40. A lot of them we're doing right there. No, no, we don't. So to be honest, Cynthia, not set up by the by the courthouse by the church. Yeah, because I expected, oh, okay, we're coming off a 45-mile-an-hour highway. I can see why you would just want to walk everybody up here at 15 on a blind corner. I expected to see the 15-mile-an-hour sign down there by the parking lot. But, yeah, so it's 25 all of Tombstone Canyon now, really? Yeah. yeah really, as the, bad as the speed is there, it's not the number one safety concern. The number one safety concern right there is people doing U-turns and uh, flipping because they're heading in the wrong direction. So they flip a U-turn right down. We count 100 a day, you know, accidents. You know, I'm waiting for it. Um, 
but that's more of a concern than what speed is. Not that speed is not a concern in that area, but, um, you know, but there's multiple things that could be done to help both of those problems. Yeah, those little, little boleros or whatever they put in the road, right, so people can't flip them. They do. Can we put that on the agenda? I think that's worth pursuing to help the city or to help cases. Stop okay. U turns right. I know I'm guilty of doing it myself. <laughs> I will put that. No, I'll put it on there. I, or maybe I it's a, that a little ramp that actually goes up that way and adds a whole new little parking lot area. <laughs> Seriously, it adds to, uh, uh, item number six. There, and they'd be able to turn around and it creates 16 new parking spots. Where's that? Uh, just adjacent to the other city parking lot, that little one across from my building. So, grassy area. Looking at that, it'd be to the left of that, in that grassy knoll area between um the highway and the Queen Mine. Hmm, I know what you're talking about. Yep. That's yeah, when you first a the double lane time. with a ramp over through there, the ramp would allow a turnaround, and then the double lane would allow eight rows or two rows of eight cars. I, I have actually heard that concept. Um, I will tell you that that's eight out right of way, so it's working with them. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, so that brings us to the discussion on new parking lot signage on Walsh Avenue. Yeah. And also, right. what's, and, and what's the other par parking lot above the um, Walsh Avenue parking lot? How do we refer to that one? Is that the so, one up on an opera? Opera. Mm -hmm. Sure, okay. Parking lot, the one up on opera? Did we ever, is that just for the purposes of discussion that we rename these parking lots so we can all be familiar with what we're talking about? You know, because the opera parking lot's not really on opera, is it? Right. Yeah, and it's right <laughs> off of opera. Right. It's so, off of opera. The only access off of the high one is opera. The low one, two parking lots off of Walsh Avenue. Right. When we're and we're since we're going to discuss the signage, I'd like to rename those parking lots. I think one could be the copper parking lot and one could be the turquoise parking lot. Well, I think they should be named after the streets that give you access so that tourists and other people can find them. <laughs> Even though that's really true enough. Well, we could have sort of copper colored signs and turquoise colored signs. I, I still think you should name them after the street that access. Area. Okay, well, we'll keep the names as the Walsh Avenue parking lot and the Opera parking lot. And what, kind of, what kind of signage yeah, would you think Walsh of? Avenue. Yeah? Number one, number one, it would be really nice. They have signage that's 20 years old. Has anybody been to Walsh Avenue lately or the other one up on Opera? They no, have yeah, some. Walsh Avenue is. What, Jesus? No, I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. No, I, I was, I'm not sure where Walsh Avenue is. I'm Steve. Steve doesn't know Walsh. Been, Does anybody even know where the Walsh Avenue parking lots are? Does everybody know what we're talking about? Yeah, no, I don't. I can't picture it. I probably do. Be describing Let me pull it up. Steve, I can tell you you're driving up. It's not by the name. Oh. You're driving over three belt. On your Aaron. left is City Park. Yeah, City Park. Street. So yeah. you're driving up three Gulch. On your left is City Park. Then you drive a little further, like 400 feet, and there's a little street there called Walsh Avenue. There's oh, one block. There you go. I know. Well, I know there's, there's a gentleman that lived up on top of that hill, and his property goes all the way down to Brewery Gulch. Part of that parking lot was his. Then there's the sides that, and then there's some on the side of Walsh Avenue. But there's some private property up in there too. It's a weird oh, property. Corner, on Walsh and Brewery Gulch, that little corner is owned by the Rileys, right there. That little corner is private. Oh, else okay, is yeah, yeah, yeah. See, then okay. there's you've got a house up on top of the hill that actually goes all the way down. But anyway. But this yeah. is the city parking lot here that we see on Gretchen's house, floor. the one this side of Gretchen's house. There's a house this side of Gretchen's house that owns a whole bunch of that. Some of that's his parking. Although that no. although that whole that house is in probate and up for sales now, but um the city might oh, actually yeah. be able to acquire that property real cheap. But, yeah. <laughs> 
I was under the impression that this parking lot here that uh, we just had the hand over was city, not that, that's private right there, but behind there, that's all city property there. And we're oh, okay. That. Okay, I thought you meant further up towards. No, right there. Okay. That, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. You're fine. Yeah. Where the bus is is all city. Two. It's two levels, six feet. There's two parking lots. One six, eight feet above the other. Where that bus is, Jesus yeah. moved the land. That's also okay. a city. Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend's property is that White House, right to just to the other side. I see. Yeah, and his property runs down in front of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, his, yeah. his access is into the one over there off of Opera Drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I see where you're talking. There's a couple of cars parked towards, you know, uh, the uphill side of, of Brewery Gulch that are on that gentleman's property, but everything this side of it and that one in the corner. Somebody owns that little piece in the corner? Yes. A little Riley's okay. own. They own this house. Right? They own a house up there. Okay. Yeah. So so we, we, for? we have discussed the advisability of paving that parking lot that's owned by the city and putting signage to direct people there to park. You have in the past, you mean? Yeah. Well, I would definitely move to, to send that recommendation to the city. I think it's a good idea. We might want to discuss it more, but I would move to do that. And Cynthia, yeah. did you have any specific comments about the type of signage or the placement of the signage? Well, so it's not only signage, but like Stephen said, if you all have entertained or you paving that, I should tell you that Bisbee Vogue Inc., the city of Bisbee is willing to spend some money and believes KENG would give the city of Bisbee and our nonprofit a great price on the asphalt because at least the first 10 feet of it where the rock keeps falling out into Walsh Avenue, the Bisbee 1000 has a change this year in its 30th year and we were running 1500 people up Walsh Avenue and we were are repairing in partnership with the city of Bisbee the stairs that go up there to oh, offer yeah, drive. Yeah, that was a nasty set of stairs there. Oh. Yeah, it's a nasty set of stairs. It still is. Hopefully yeah. it won't be in the next three months. And the parking lot's also very nasty. So exactly. so it's like I like to call Bisbee's last, like that bus is a hippie bus. It's Bisbee's last hippie artist neighborhood. And the citizens around it believe believe that they own it. And so People like me who come in and say, oh, we're going to clean this up and we're going to bring people by your door. That's why I'm hated, in case you wonder. But I'm willing to be hated because I believe that public property, parks, parking lots, streets, sewers, all the stuff that's public that we as citizens pay to help our city help us, we can't just have citizens claim it as their own. So, so unfortunately, that's kind of why I got on streets and infrastructure. This is going to happen, some part of it, but if you all thought, hey, let's recommend to the mayor and council that we pave the whole thing, this would be the time to do it the next couple of months. Is that not correct, Jesus? Yes, now is paving time. So um, if you all wanted to do something like that, um, I would say, yeah, let's. I would make a motion to move to recommend that to the city for consideration. I second the motion. Well, unfortunately, we can't vote on that, but I think Ben was asking to see something like this, right, Ben? Yeah, oh, I, yeah I just, I just suggest a second to you on number seven. Number seven is discussion and approval on recommendations on paid parking and signage plan for high traffic hotspots, and that would be this place right here. In other words, okay. we probably fair enough. Let's do number seven. Let's do that number seven. Are we at number seven? Yeah, we are number seven. Number seven, moving right along. Right, okay, then I'll okay. seven. That, that motion, I'll, the same thing. I move that we suggested that the city, um, how did I word that? Anyway. Hey, Walsh Avenue Parking we and put in the so This recommendation to the city for consideration. Yeah, right. Okay. That's all. I just wanted to consider. Of paving and signage for the Walsh Avenue parking lot. And signage, yes. Painting and signage includes that word. Is, word is, yes. I second the motion. All oh. in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed, say nay. It's unanimous. We uh, uh, we recommend that that be paved and sign and add signage to bring uh, parking into those two parking lots. I will uh, 
uh, draft a council action form and I present that on our April 2nd uh, council meeting. Good. While we're talking about those parking lots, I also wanted to talk about the Opera Drive parking lot in the same way. Okay. Yeah, but it's not on the agenda. <laughs> yeah, that one's not on the agenda, unfortunately. We have to put that upper one on the agenda next time. Yeah, we're no, we're next... talking about high traffic hotspots, and we consider Oh, all... that's true. That's Why not? Yeah. Number seven. I got you covered, Larry. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we can add that language to it. Yeah, add the upper street language to that. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion on that one. I uh, I like to make a motion to uh, pave. Uh, suggest the council to pave and sign the opera uh, parking lot um, the next uh, council meeting. I second that. Good. All in favor, say aye. Uh, any opposed say nay that's unanimous also so those two parking lots can be brought to the city council with our recommendation for paving and signage well yes and Cynthia, i think you had another idea that there should be a charge for weekend parking there well if you go down to number nine let's look at number nine uh-huh we gotta go to eight first <laughs> all right eight let's, first. let's knock out number eight the discussion of establishing lots as pay lots on weekends. That's yeah, well, that's just if you ever go to Tombstone, they have a cute little box there on their their parking, and it says donations. You know, it's like I forget. Oh, they, they five dollars. Yeah, some people might actually pay. Then people, some people actually pay, and who cares whether they pay or not? It's it's a guy who says, hey, you know, David here, pay for parking. And, David has a lot of experience with these uh, parking lots. David, can we hear from you? People definitely will put money in any little slot or hole that is available there, even if it says not to. Not everyone will, but a lot of people will. Who will also go in to, and take every opportunity and chance they can are some of the locals. So, you know, you need to make sure that it is highly secure um, in always senses um, and then making sure that it's manned or at least attended to multiple times throughout the day um, especially if it's you know on those weekends um, you know because there's nothing worse than actually collecting but then that money never going or getting to you know where it's supposed to be going to um, and then you lose the trust of you know the people that are actually you know contributing and paying you know that portion of it. Um, like I said, not everybody will. A significant amount of people, surprisingly, definitely will. Um, if you ask for ten, they might only give you five type thing, but they'll look, they'll drop it in. But like I said, the number one uh, thing on that is it has to be attended, retrieved, um, and highly secure we had to go to the point of it like literally had to be the building itself um, because you can't take the building um, but anything that you know that's in the wall metal they cut through metal I you know they, you name it they've done it um, so just look at both ends of it I suppose um, I like the voluntary ass oh, go ahead Jesus. so that I have recently been contacted by a company that uh, does paid parking, but it's an app. So there is no money, no physical money exchange. You, 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 tech, you can technically text the money to them. I'm not sure. I didn't, I didn't have a whole lot of conversation with them, but that could be an option is where we don't do any physical exchange of money. It's all electronic. I, like that. I went to a park like at the beach, and they, you know, for twenty dollars, you just put your credit card in, and then you got your parking space for the day or something. Yep. And uh, you have to have the enforcement end of it. And when, you, when you eliminated the cash, then that eliminates a lot of that cash handling problems. Uh, ben, do you have something to say? I would also suggest because I just on Facebook conversations over the past five years about parking. Uh, suggest having this app as a great idea because uh, it's probably low overhead but also not really having any city staff 
being paid to monitor because that costs money. And the elimination of handling cash. Once you start to handle cash, you have to, you know, track right. it. And, right. So I, I'm all in favor of that. Yeah, the app is a brilliant idea because, granted, this co company is going to get between one and five or seven percent like your money, but then it just literally goes straight into the city's coffers. They set up their bank account, and nobody touches it. The the finance lady just monitors it. I mean, our app for the busy. So what happens when nobody? Yeah, but if it's just an app and nobody's monitoring it or making sure. No, no, that, that would be very quick that people money. catch on and they're just like, nope, not doing it, not paying it. Well, tourists won't catch on because they, oh, they absolutely. Know. I bet I the think, company, I bet the yeah, company, yeah, we're going to do this for us. They're not new people all the time. We have annual pests that, you know, come back every three months, every six months, once a year. It'll, it, it'll be quick and gone. Isn't there it some would, kind of um, ticket you get when you, uh, put your money in the app, I mean, you know, a parking, you know, uh, thing. Right, but if nobody is checking or doing anything that, for those individuals who don't get it. Right. Well, I'm sure Chief Achave could help us with the local police to uh, put on parking tickets. Hey, Sue, you think so? <laughs> I think um, we should. Um, local people would get them. What's the problem? We should do. I'm against state parking, David. <laughs> But what we do is a pilot program, and because you do have to allow residential people to park there. And then you have to have other spots that are available for tourists. So residents are going to somehow, because the residents would go nuts if they thought they had to pay, and we don't want to say the residents have to pay. So therefore, you have residents and freeloaders who will do what they do, but that's not the point. The point is that the tourists from Phoenix and Maine, and you name it, they want to pay. That's the thing that people don't get about paid parking. The tourists feel safer when they pay. <laughs> so they will. So you There's know, a second half to that. Here's you don't remember my hand, but if you look at it, if you look at that parking lot now, we've got the Google Earth of it. Those would probably be the only vehicles you'd actually really have a problem with anybody over. You're not going to see a sudden influx of all the locals parking their cars in that parking lot unless they already live right there anyway. So I like, I, the, I, you know, and I like the idea of not having threatening signs and I, law enforcement's going to haul your ass away if you don't pay your ticket. That I, kind, you know, I, don't, I just like I, I parking meters. I don't like that. Just a nice sign that says, "We really would appreciate it if you pay for parking." Here's the way to do it. Donations to the broke city of Bisbee here. That's right, man. Exactly. Well, hey, Jesus, if you did a little bit more research with this company. Yeah. To, uh, install the app. I'm sure they would have some uh, guidelines to help us, uh, you know, yeah. regulate that. Yeah. Hey, Why don't I do this? Back to Why don't I do this? Um, I'll reach out and try, try to find them, um, and maybe even I can have them do a presentation for us. I think that'd be great. So you can see how that works. Yeah, I love that. And and then yeah. at that point, maybe we can even um, on the next agenda have something that says. That you uh, maybe even a possible vote and recommendation to the city council or something to that effect, but um, right. I can probably right. have them. Right now, yeah. We can just get them paid. We'll be way ahead. Good enough. Because once they're paid, people will pay. You know. I'll make a note of that. Okay. We'll hear that. Anthony, you can go up there by the Cyril Avenue, above Tack Avenue. Those parking lights by the YMCA. You might actually. Think about doing it to those too. Yes, that's a great idea. And signage. And then, I think some signage directing people to the parking lot would help people find. I, you know, I see people driving around looking for places to park. You know, if there was, you know, just little signs that said parking this way, you know, right. 50 meters, 100 meters, you know, that would help people find those lots. Yeah, there's just like as much parking in those lots as there is in the rest of the town. <laughs> Yeah, David uh, said we could get 50 parking spaces out of those three lots. You still stand by that statement, David? Um, <laughs> Which three are we looking at? <laughs> so, Larry, are we going to move to number nine? Because nine fits right in here, too. Yes. Uh, 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 let me see. Well, all right, now, so now this is the swimming pool, and um, I haven't had much of a chance to look that over. Cynthia, again, I think you're the expert on that. Uh, 
I remember Jesus saying if we had some asphalt left over, he might be able to go up there and lay it down, you know, uh, rather than um, do whatever it is you do with leftover asphalt. Uh, was there something yeah, else? Put it all down on roads. <laughs> well, actually, actually, number nine is, is not. Leftover. It is not the area in front of the pool where we hope he's going to right. lay some asphalt, as he promised uh, that he would do six months ago. Higgins Hill Avenue is actually the street behind the pool, behind the pool area where you're thinking of Larry. And if uh -huh. you've ever driven up there, you turn, you go up Higgins Hill Avenue, there's five houses on your right, and there's all property owned by the city of Bisbee on your left. And Mayor Smith, Mayor Smith, Mayor Budge went up there because months ago, and he brought somebody with him, and I've been up there with Larry Saunders, K-E-N-G, and the area behind the pool will hold, I think, 75 cars. Budge told me he thought it would hold 90 cars. His guy told him he could design it for 90 cars. It's right there, right there, show him that. Oh, and it hey. needs to be dug out. It needs to be dug out, which K-E-N-G could do, and it would give these residents a nice place to park, and it would hold, if it holds 60 to 90 cars, if you clean it out and pave it, that's the one we can really charge for, and that's the one we could give people signage to who are staying for days and weeks at a time or what have you. I mean, it's, it's just a, it's an asset the city has that needs to be developed, in my opinion, as a parking lot. And Budge has somebody who looked at it, and, and I mean, it's been real casually looked at. For Bisbee 1000, we have it labeled, and it holds the way it is now with gravel, and dirt and bush back. It holds about 30 cars the way it is right now. Well, so you want to utilize it a little. Oh, okay, okay, good. So and the locals who have lived here for years. But it makes it easier. You see, we already used it for that. So let's just develop it so we can use it even better for its intended purpose. Good idea, Cynthia. Right. Well, it accesses the pool and the pickleball courts and the, the basketball courts. I mean, instead of driving on that little bit at the front of the pool, Everybody would want to go to the back of the pool, and there's a cute little bridge, and we could landscape it, and Ben could design it and make it beautiful. <laughs> ben, what do you think? Uh, <clears throat> well, I actually, I, there is some backstory on that that lot. When I was teaching architecture at the U of A, and actually designed uh, low income or just uh, height housing in that area, uh, and if we could fit a ton of housing with parking. But that's another story. Uh, what I was thinking also is um, there's already kind of an informal trail, but that also could help the county with parking as well, too. And if they park up there for county, especially employees, that might release some pressure by the Iron Man area, hmm. uh, which will help the businesses. Because, uh, you know, a judge probably doesn't want to park near the Iron Man because his, his Lamborghini is going to get smashed up. He'd probably rather park way up back behind the pool where it's a little safer. So, and by Lamborghini, I mean that because I've seen Lamborghinis in that area. And you're talking about maybe having some sort of walkway or path or something that... Okay, so there's currently... Possibly, or just... Or just uh, they can use the street. They can use. They can walk down Higgins, but you we know, can build everything has a price. From that county parking lot up to the new parking lot, you could build a really nice set of stairs. Something that hasn't been done for a while, but it's very easy to do. Oh, I um, see. Can, uh, I like that idea. And maybe the county would give us the money. Maybe we could write grants. Not we, the city. <laughs> Whoever. <laughs> well, the county attorney's so building is very good at grants. The county attorney's building is up at Higgins, and there's already a little bit of an in ingress to that behind the county building already from Higgins. Yeah, I, I have a 3D model. I've got a 3D model of that that uh, Robert Quinton R gave me, Jesus. So, if you need that, I, yeah. I can hand it over. Uh, but you know basically what? that. Yeah, there's there's a couple areas where you can do because we already designed stairs in that area where you definitely can put stairs easily, and one of them goes from the north corner of the pool to the parking lot below, and there's already an informal trail there, so it's it's already a good grade for a stairway. 
Yeah. And, so and on that, you could still put little how you could put some quite little little houses up here on this hill above that great big parking lot. So the, you guys have the five hundred stairs, yeah. and it could be it could be fifteen hundred. Jesus, are you saying Jesus has a comment? Yeah, I do, and, and I'm just going to bring up just a concern, or not even a concern, but just what I'm thinking about as far as engineering. We're talking about putting in an asphalt parking lot, fairly decent sized. It's not something I would feel comfortable just going and paving because we're creating a large impermeable area where the water is going to start going down. It's going to run downhill. So we would have to, I, I would feel more comfortable. Um, I, I think it's a great idea, um, but having that engineered so that we can retain the water somewhere. Um, I don't want to just let it run downhill. We're, we're, we'd, be, we'd be increasing the flow of water downhill. So just put that in your mind. In your mind. Um, I, I, don't, I wouldn't feel comfortable just going out and having my crew going and paving that. I, I, I well, think it's something that would have to be engineered. Well, you could probably put like a drainage lagoon or some sort of large area like that mm -hmm. in and around it that would collect water and let it soak into the ground kind of a thing. Yeah, it would be a detention or a retention basin. Most likely detention in this area. I mean, we, um, I don't, don't know that we need to retain everything all in its own spot, but we would only retain whatever we increased. So that's, that's the idea behind that. So let's just say we increase the flow. Uh, the the by uh, that's what we're thing. doing with a deck. Yeah, you want to basically allow the water that would naturally flow to continue to flow. Let it go. But the but stuff it's that would it's normally it's soak in, you want to soak in that same area. So you put a you put a basin in that allows that normal. Yes, sir. So that would, soil, yeah. I would think that we would for sure want to have that engineered. I don't yeah. anticipate that being a whole I, lot. Here's an asset as infra streets and infrastructure. We should keep our eye on. I'm not saying we should pave it tomorrow. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Right. But it's a wonderful place, including when Ben brought up that he has some history with this area. I mean, I can see, I, mean, I don't know how much of that the city owns, but boy, there's lots of room for little houses up there as part of this parking lot development project, you know? I love little it's houses. Great, I think they're a great idea. Great economic development and infrastructure, streets and infrastructure is not economic development, but because the city has no economic development, we can certainly contribute to that with our suggestions to the mayor and council, right? I mean, that would be the way I'd look at it. That'd be an awesome camping ground. <laughs> more, the, the more sewers you get, the more money you get. That's right. What, uh, what future action should we take on item number nine? Uh, continue it and have the city advise us. I don't know. <laughs> um, what do you think? Why don't I, hmm, I think what we need to do, if you all want to uh, pursue this, is we need to go to council for a request for, actually, no, I don't have to do that because I have engineers on contract. Um, let's do this so that we're, we're formal. We'll put this on the agenda so that you guys can vote for a recommendation. Because I don't, does it have a vote on there yet? Discussion on recommendation. Um, then vote. So we'll put this on so that way you guys can recommend it. And uh, and then I will um, reach out to some engineers and and uh, we can uh, get uh, a price on engineering for that. Okay, we'll have that as on the agenda the, at our next meeting to vote for uh, an engineering study, recommendation for an engineering study for a um, large parking lot in that area. Is that agreeable to everyone? And we, you know, it there might be, and Cindy's probably Cindy's probably going to look for grant money to do that with. Is there grants available for parking lot building? <laughs> <laughs> We'd have to do a kind of combo housing parking lot. This brings us back to the uh, num item number 10, discussion and approval on recommendation for a hydrology study of Tombstone Canyon Road. Uh, I think we were still kind of hung on whether we really have a problem there. 
So this one is, let's do this. Let's do yeah. this because it does, it does say uh, discussion and approval on recommendation. Right. So you want us to do a hydrology study? I feel better about doing a hydrology study than waiting for those businesses to flood to discover that we have a problem. Okay, so then I think that's where you guys are at. Do you want to recommend that or not? I think that's, a vote. that's to, for vote. I'll move for that. I'll move that we recommend to the county to do a hydrology study on the Tombstone Canyon drainage problem before it becomes a legal problem. I second that motion. All in okay. favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed say nay. Second. I, I'd, also, I'd also like to say that I've looked at a couple of places that I would like the hydrology study to um, specifically consider. You know, I, I mean, I, all of the elevations and the flow and all of that stuff is, uh, you know, uh, fine. But there were a couple of things such as that um, uh, manhole cover in front of the um, the uh, museum the or the gallery. Yeah. Uh, there was also, um, my gosh, I had a list of things, a couple, two, three. All right. Um, there's also a manhole cover very similar to the one in front of that uh, gallery that's at the entrance to the Royal parking lot that if I felt that if that manhole cover which I do believe is going to be a direct uh, access to that large drainage ditch that runs there you know underneath the Royal Theater um, if we could lower the level of that of the entrance to the Royal Park lot where that manhole cover is, I think that would uh, dewater quite a bit of um, uh, the channeling of the water down Tombstone Canyon Road below there. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I I do. And there's it doesn't say sanitary sewer on the lid. It's not a sewer lid. And to the south of that, keep in mind, it's totally covered, but to the south of that is uh, the drainage ditch. It's covered by Commerce Street, and the parking lot goes over that drainage ditch. Right. But it, it's that's in very close proximity. Right. And I believe that if there was just a slight depression made in that entrance to the um, Royal parking lot, that that water would then channel out of Tombstone Canyon Road and into that, uh, that's the last off-ramp for water heading down Tombstone Canyon Road that could be uh, drained um, into that drain in that storm drain ditch that's got all kinds of capacity. Okay, so what I just did right now is I sent an email off to the Flood Control District um, getting this going. So we're already done. <laughs> I, oh, I, I hope that they can do it. If they can't do it, I ask them if they have resources so that we can hire a contractor. So we are moving forward. Hey, Good. They That's just fine. spend lots of money on a drone. They ought to be able to do it. Yeah. One, one thing to keep in mind is that monsoon will not wait for us. So yeah, there should be some short-term temporary fixes. Months. That's creeping up on us quick. Very quick. Three months away, man. And hey, Sus, did you say you were going to look at that uh, manhole cover that's welded? Oh, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We can, we'll go take a look at it here. Let me send that off right now, too, because I will forget. Send that off to me. Let's look at. Uh, with... Remember, we also have the old fire suppression system pipes that hook to the old swimming pools. There's some of those that run through there too, and that might be one of those manholes. Well, there's yes, there's there's a uh, water main up above the Royal Theater, and then there's gas pipes that are down there in that drainage ditch too. But uh, that's that's just fewer obstacles uh, between Tombstone Canyon Road and uh, the drainage ditch. Was that address uh, Ben? Was that address in front of the? Uh the uh, art museum is at 24 Main Street? 25. 
And what about? Oh no, you're right. Twenty four. You're right. Twenty five yeah, on the other side. side of the street. Yeah. The shady side. And have we talked? Have we explored the possibility of fixing the sidewalk in front of uh, that uh, gallery, bringing it up to um, what are we going to call that level? Which, uh, I, 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 I know it, a four inch. Um, I don't want to do a whole a lot with. I don't want to move water to another place unintentionally. Uh, I you're inside the building or you're just raising the curb, raising the curb in the sidewalk so it'll be level with the uh, slope above that property and below the property. Yeah, we, we got to take a look at the entrance of the building. If you, the reason that, that there's a dip there is yep. that building is, is low. When you look at that building, it's low. So if we raise the sidewalk, um, that means that the water is either going to go in the building or into the street. And so let's take a look at it. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, well, just remember there, that's right where that uh, manhole cover is. That sure. manhole cover might just let the water all out of there. We'll take a look. Okay. Well, I think that completes our agenda for tonight. Um, we have, uh, you, you have to go through member comments. Yes. Comments. Cynthia raised her hand, actually. Yes. Uh, Did you have a comment? Any question? Now, I just have a quick question. Isn't it the side that the Roca, the, the Roca Cafe is on? Which no, is the opposite the side of from the manhole. When I've looked at that, the Roca and then uh, the gallery next to it, which is Sloan's, that side of the street that to me seems lower than the right side where the manhole is. Isn't that more threatening? And if that water comes down, it's not going to turn. It's going to go right into Roca and the place next door, which is, I don't know what no. exactly. The east side of the street, I think, is much more vulnerable for flooding because of the angles there than, than the side where the man we've been talking about. If, if you look at the photo, sorry, uh -huh. if you look at the photo that was shared earlier, you'll okay. see where the water actually flows is on the south the south side, uh, next to 24. I mean, the right. water, yeah, well, and that's I'm, where the sidewalk is very low. Yeah, because the, the center of the street's really high, so it flows out of the center both ways. In fact, the center of the street, I think, is higher than the curb height. Yes, in front of Roca, the um, the peak of that street is higher than the curb. But I think we can take water out of that street at the bottom of that Royal Park, at the entrance to the Royal parking lot. And there's also, I like the idea of trying to shunt the water off. There's the water channels down Tombstone Canyon Road when it rains hard. And I think we can shunt some of that water off just below the Royal Theater with um, a temporary traffic calming type um, uh, uh, speed bumps that might even be removed after the monsoon season and installed before the monsoon. There's nice uh, yellow bumps that raise up uh, four, you know, four inches to put those yeah, on angle. You know, there's actually a low spot in the sidewalk at that corner and a big gap in the building, and I'm sure like a drain could be put in there. You might, you know, that, you know, once you get that, the uh, I would call it a water bar instead of a sweep, but once you get the water bar in there to guide the water towards that corner, maybe you could put like a grate or something so that it just goes to, won't run over the sidewalk. It goes underneath and then into the channel. Those are yeah. the polyethylene, right? Aren't they like right. polyethylene? Right. Put them put them down before the, the monsoons begin and pick them up after the monsoons are over. Also, there's a there's at the top of that Royal parking lot. There's like a dogwood tree or something that's blossoming right now. And there's a crack right there between that, just at the end of that building, at the top of that parking lot, where you can put water into that storm drain. You can kind of, you can draw a lot of water uh, with water bars. We're coming to it. Uh, keep going up the hill, up the street, up the street, up the street. Right there uh, at the side of where that white building is, at the top of that Royal parking lot on the left hand side. Your area. You know, the Bisbee Grand, the Busy Bee parking lot. Yeah, I call that the Bisbee Grand parking lot, yes. And then see where that, oh, stop right there. See where that metal, see where that, um, just at the back corner of that building, uh, where that green, that green, right, right there, you're into that drainage area right there. You, you that's, just, yeah, that's the gulch. The gulch goes right underneath that. 
Right, and and it's open right there. There, you know, there's oh, that channel, Mill Gold Channel, yeah. Right. If you look at that green tree on the back side of that building, that's flowering right now with beautiful pink flowers. I think it's like a dogwood tree or something. But right pink there pink. is, uh, if you could get the water to run through there, you could put it right into that uh, drainage gulch. So give me one no, second. No, no, you, yeah, you go back to where you were before. Last. Give me, before. Let, let me let me throw oh. something out there. Uh-huh. Just because I've been thinking about this, and you all have similar ideas. You see this right here? That's a that's a, a scupper catch basin uh-huh. that catches the water. It's got a pipe that runs. And I can't get this to move right. into the channel, which is right here. Right. Well, this is the this is so the. What uh, we were talking about earlier. We were talking about and and Ben said I think it was Ben said it, or somebody had mentioned that I talked to the mayor, and um, yeah. I th- this is for big scupper, big scuppers. but again, I need to make sure that we're we're not doing some. Either way, this is we, we can put water in here. This has a pipe that gets there. Right, but so you see I, that scupper um, should go all the way across the road. You're right. right. And that's, exactly. my, that, that's that's a concept that I have. Yeah. And if you bring that yeah. arrow across the street, Jesus, into that parking lot, just uh, into that the the. Right. the ocean. Oh, there yeah, you know. uh, go closer to the garbage cans. Closer to the garbage cans uh, uh, down here, away from the away from the handicap parking space toward the, toward the building, right there. No, yeah. Uh, there might it might be this it might be this manhole cover right there. All right, so now there that. If you were to lower that by eight inches, that would take the water out of Tombstone Canyon Road and drop it right into that drainage ditch that runs under there. All kinds of capacity. Then I'm oh. just make a little hollow there. Yeah, but the I big scupper concepts. Yeah, basically, you could start for where where these three arrows are, and have a scupper there that goes straight to the south. Yeah, there's there's definitely ideas. I don't I don't think that. We we are in any kind of dire straits. If if we need to do something, I think we have a lot of options. Yeah, we do. We think we need to do something. It's going to rain. Well, yeah. We got we got early, Arizona. We have we have two months. We got two months because sometimes the rains come early. So. Yeah. Well, it's a La Nina year. We might not get as many. Well, there we go. It's not going to rain. I'll be very interested to hear your report, Jesus. Uh, get under there with a the flashlight, and uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, we'll go for it. <laughs> we'll go for it. All right, so uh, the other, the final agenda items here are... Uh, Member comments. So I need to remind you, because I, I was reminded um, that when you have a member comment, um, you can make a comment. Um, there should be no discussion. So if you want to make whatever comment it is, um, let the person make the comment and no discussion. Okay, I, I'll make a comment. I think our I think our meeting tonight was extremely productive. I like what came out of from it. From it, that's the most serious discussion in seven years um, on this committee we've had about parking. Good job. Oh. Okay, well we can't we can't make any uh, comments on that. Any other uh, uh, comments? Yeah, well, I just want to thank everybody for being really productive. It seemed to me that we moved some, a lot of ideas forward. So it's great. Mr. Stone. Uh, yes, is that you, Mr. Pollock? Yes, it is. I have a comment. Yes, go ahead. I think you as a committee should consider having meetings once, once a month. You're going to be running up against some very serious, expensive problems in the next three months. Uh, if uh, the judge's decision on some of the problems in old bisbee is any indication oh yeah with all that other infrastructure we might be adopting are we talking about the retaining walls oh, yeah retaining walls sewers storm drainage everything lateral yeah. service structure the city's responsible for yeah, we're not allowed to discuss so that's right we can't discuss how could we schedule a meeting uh, every month is it, are, are we shut out of that now because of the way the agenda ran today? 
Um, let me address that in my staff comments. All right, so then you wanted to uh, add the staff comment, Jesus? Well, if anybody, if we're done with member comments, I can, I can, I'll make I, my I've comments. got, I've got member comment. Uh, uh, I'd, at the next meeting, I'd like to discuss predictably tombstone flooding, um, tombstone canyon flooding mitigation, and temporary fixes. Or quick fixes. Quick fixes. <laughs> plans for emergencies. Okay. Well, all right. again, no discussion, but that was a comment. That was a good comment. Mm -hmm. I, liked your, I liked your comment, Lewis. I don't know how to um, accommodate it like, because we can't discuss it. All right, Just so think now, about it. Let's move on to the staff comments. Okay. So my staff comments is I know that that was uh, first, uh, I know that that was a subject uh, with the having meetings monthly. Um, I would be willing, because I, I have to be here. I'd be willing to um, add some meetings, but I don't know that I can promise that I can. We can have them every month. Um, I my my agenda is my calendar is is pretty full, so th I would suggest that if you all want to have monthly meetings, um, that uh, they're not a regularly scheduled meeting that we do something where it's a special session, um, and then that you will give me an opportunity to look at my calendar and see if I can accommodate you all. Um, I definitely feel that this uh, committee is, is extremely important, especially right now. Um, so if we have regularly scheduled meetings, I, 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 I don't know that I could, I could meet that, but if we had special sessions, that would give me an opportunity to check my calendar and see if I can meet that. Um, so that's how I would like to address the uh, monthly meetings. Um, my second comment, let me see here, what did I have? Oh, okay. So uh, the other, another thing that, that was uh, um, presented to me is that our agenda items, um, we, we had previously, and I didn't see, feel that there was a huge problem with this, but um, we usually uh, Lorena would uh, put out a, an email asking um, for agenda items, and everybody would send them to Lorena. Um, we need to change that because they need to come from the agenda, the, the proposed agenda needs to come from the committee chair. So what needs to happen then is your proposed agenda items need to go to Mr. Stone, and then he can present the uh, proposed agenda items to uh, the, city, the city staff, and then we can, we can publish that. So just a little minor change on, on how we do agenda items. Um, my question is, with the open meeting law, everybody talking to Larry, how does that work with that? Let me get back with you on that. Let me, yeah, let me make that, sure that's always been a gray area for me. I, and it, it, I have that question on my chair. I'm, I had the NSD, and I have that same question. I just need let to me, get that. Let me, let, I will get back with you through um, Ashley, and she will give us the exact uh, uh, instructions on how to do that. So we'll do okay. that. And, uh, I do have one other thing I do want to mention, and I know I had a couple of things, but I do have a third one that I want to mention. And um, I want to um, apologize to Mr. Ben Lepley. I uh, raised the volume volume of my um, voice and my tone earlier in the meeting, and I apologize. Um, that was inappropriate of me. Appreciate it. I apologize likewise. Yeah, ben. I think that's great. I think we, I think we're all working really well together. And uh, if you, anyone wants to contact me, write this down. My email address is stone at centurylink.net. Stone at centurylink.net. And I'd also look forward to the possibility of having a special meeting in April. Um, to uh, work uh, on some of this unresolved stuff that needs to be taken care of <laughs> before the monsoons come. Okay, but I'm out of town April 22nd until May 1st. <laughs> okay, well, we'll miss you if we have to schedule it at that time.
but uh, you know, I think I think another um, meeting would be in order here in the month of April, after after Jesus presents our proposal to the city council on paving the parking lots and uh, and, and procuring some signage. Okay. How about uh, uh, Larry? We get together and we can see if we can't uh, find a good date for a special session in April. That that'll be great. I, I'm I'm not sure we can discuss it any more than that though. But I look forward to that. Okay. All right. Thanks for a really productive meeting, everybody. And uh, I think we're going to get uh, some good things done uh, quickly here. So I'd like to adjourn the meeting. Uh, I'm not going to announce that the next meeting is May 20th because hopefully we'll meet in April. And uh, do we need to have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Yeah, sure? I make a motion to adjourn. I second that. All in favor? Uh, hey. Anyone opposed? Okay, the meeting's uh, going to be adjourned here at uh, 740, 7.42 uh, at uh, today. Thank you. Sure.